How to program the SPI flash on board. Almost all the low-cost 3.0 cable modems use SPI flash. What is SPI? SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Only four signal pins are needed to talk to the main CPU. The original SPI flash has only eight pins. Signal pins are DI for data in and DO for data out. It's clock and CS for chip select. The rest pins are ground, power, hold, and WP. In order to program properly, you need to pull hold and WP high. Most modems use 16-pin flash, which can be extended for fast programming, but it is backward compatible with 8-pin, meaning you can program the modem as long as the proper pins are connected. This is the uh, SOIT 8 clip, and this is the board come with it. So you can, in theory, this is 16 pins pin out, and this is 8 pin pin out. And I modify this jumper and with the wires and here, so I can plug in like this. Use the same uh, connector, and this side I can use the jumper wire from the JTAG cable. Now, since we need to pull the WP and hold up, so I can do some modification in here to uh, pull up all those. Here is the video showing I connected the WP and hold to power pin to make the connection permanent. This is use a solder to solder the proper pins together. There are two ways of programming the SPI flash. One is to desolder the chip off the board and program it. The other is to program the chip while it is on the board. In this video, I'm mainly talking about program the chip on board. This is also called ISP, in-system programming. One way to program the flash is to power the modem regularly and then make the JTAG or SPI flash connection. Most of the time, this configuration will fail to detect the flash or program the flash because not only the flash gets the power, the main CPU also gets the power and the CPU is trying to execute the command from the flash while our JTAG is also trying to talk to the flash and there will be a conflict in signaling. So one way is to use so-called ISP ping to avoid this thing is to uh, pull, in this case, pull pin 2 high and then stop the CPU talk to the flash. And this will make the ISP pin for this modem. After finishing the programming, then you remove this pin. A lot of people hate this method because it's very difficult to find the ISP pin. And instead of powering the board with a regular power adapter, they want to use the 3.3 volt power direct to the flash and let the JTAG program it. Sometimes it works nicely. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, sometimes why it failed and how to properly power the flash. This is a module a lot of people talk about where they get the 3.3 volt from. This is called TTL and it has the USB connection and it seems to have a 3.3 volt output. And people use this to power the chip and program it. Um, I failed on this mode and let's see why. So when this connected, I use this multimeter. By the way, I highly recommend use this multimeter. 
uh, each one should get one. And you see there's a 3.16 volt, which is not bad. And typically, if we get this voltage, it should work. However, let's see what happens if we connect it to the board and do we still have the proper voltage. Um, make sure this connects properly. Uh, it needs to be carefully connected. Okay, now let's power on and LED turns on, everything seems to be correct. And let's measure this again, see what voltage we have now at this moment. And you can see it's only 1.67 volt, which means at the time we are going to program it, instead of getting 3.3 volt, we only get 1.67 volt, which means this module is not a good source for the 3.3 volt. And if you do use this one and failed, the only thing to blame is your power source. This is a DIY module of power supply. Uh, in here, I have a power regulator and accept 12 volt in and 3.3 volt out. I also put a voltage and amperage display so you can see the uh, voltage, its outputs. Use a regular power adapter, 12 volt, to power this power supply. And you will see the output voltage is 3.28 volts. Now let's connect the uh, JTAG here. I just replaced those pins. Uh, by the way, I didn't modify the configuration. So here is the ground. And here is the power 3.3 uh, volt pin. So now let's put the plug the power on. You will see the power still stays at 3.25 volt, but the amperage is 460 milliamps. So in this configuration, the power uh, for the 3.3 volt needs 460 milliamps to be able to work properly. And you can never get such kind of uh, amperage from this TTL. And with this configuration set up, uh, the program is very smooth and not a problem at all. So in conclusion, you should get a good power source. And even though this one seems to be a little bit more overkill, fancy, but at least it shows why it failed on TTL and why, what kind of, of power we should get to be able to program. And don't blame the, the, the JTAG or something. You need to check your configuration. And Forget about the TTL, get a good power source for 3.3 volt. Conclusion, do not use TTL as 3.3 volt power source. Get a good power source.